chance to watch some film. Have you analyzed the drop off that happened mid season? Yeah, um, that's what this this early parts are are for. These early, you get a little bit of time to get away. You hire new coaches, you get a little time to get away, and then you start to analyze your season and and um, and and watch draft prospects, watch free agencies, um, and so that's what we're in the process of uh, right now. Um, you know what what happened. You know what we did well, what we didn't do well, right? And and obviously there was there was a drop off and. Of, of how we played down the stretch and how and how we coached down the stretch and uh, you know again those are those are still in the early stages of us uh, kind of identifying those things don't want to give you a premature answer um, but yeah that's what we're in the process of doing right now um, and you know we're committed obviously to getting it better and and to uh, you know taking a good step forward next year. Nick, Nick do you think Jalen needs to be more of a vocal leader next uh, next season and how do you think he did last year leading? The team? You know everybody th there's not a book that is written on this is how you lead right people lead in in different ways um and i and one thing i learned uh early about in leadership is that you have to be yourself and because if you lead and you're trying to be somebody you're not um when you lead uh then and that that gets seen through i mean that's just the same that's the same scenario i was put in um you know when i became the head coach or an offensive coordinator or whatever it was and everybody has to lead their way and and jalen has special qualities that uh that people will follow and people will want to follow um and he's got to do what he needs to do to to lead in that in that way and so some people's leadership style is loud and uh, aggressive some people's leadership styles by example and some is a mixture of both uh and and so jalen needs to lead how he needs to lead right and aj needs to lead how he needs to lead and and you know it, what whoever it is you know slay's got to lead how he needs to lead and because that's leadership right is is you know being who you are and and leading an example like at the end of the day if you're leading by example that's a great that's a great style of leadership so jalen needs to lead how he needs to lead and and i think he's done a, a great job uh, of doing so um and he'll and he'll get just like he has done in other things he'll get better at you know that part of his game and he'll get better at, just because i know that he'll continue to work on getting better at no matter what what part of the game uh, he, he needs to work at as you look back to the way you did things last year how much are you looking at changing the way you communicate with players you, is that under consideration because there's other reports out there you know that even if there's a little some players took it exceptional so what how, are you planning on changing the way you communicate with players at all you go through like any any time you go through a season, whether it's successful in your eyes or whether it's not successful in your eyes, you look on ways opportunities to get better. And I, my job is to talk to every single player, and, and and I've done that. Talk to every single coach. What went right? What went wrong? What's your and 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 you you take that into account. You take everything into account, and you try to get better at, at doing those at, at doing those things. I think connection is the our number one core value, and um, we, there were things that we as a team, myself, didn't do a good enough job of last year, right? Maybe we leaned a little bit more into one category of our core values, connect, compete, accountability, football IQ, and fundamentals. Maybe I, at times I felt like I leaned maybe a little bit into one and not enough into the other. And so those are all things that you, that you evaluate at the end of the year. And I look forward to, you know, getting better and, in, 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 you know, like I said to you guys, uh, before, like, we're not that far removed from having one of the best cultures, uh, you know, that any of us had ever been been around, and and that's, you know, our players would say that, our coaches would say that, and it's just some tweaks that we need to do, but make no mistake about it, the things that, like, you can change how you communicate uh, your culture, you can change about little ways that way you do it with it, um, but at the forefront, we're never going to change what it, what the culture is, connect, compete accountability, football IQ, and fundamentals. And we have the right coaches in here uh, to do it, and we have the right players in here to do it um, because we have good people in that in this building. What parts, what parts of Kellen Moore's scheme will complement most of yours? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, so obviously Kellen, I, I heard Kellen because, you know, I felt like he was the, the best guy uh, for the job, and, and, and Kellen's been successful in, in – every place that he's been. I know it's relatively really a, a young career, but he's been successful as a player. Um, he's been successful as a coach, um, you know, and, and so, you know, I like the way he thinks about football and the way he, he takes everything in and, 
and is able to make decisions off of that. So it's been fun getting to know him. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've always had respect from him from afar. Um, and it's been fun to get to know him and work through these things together, uh, you know, to, to build our offense for, for next season. And, and so he's been highly successful and, and we've been highly successful. And I think that, you know, I'm really looking forward to meshing the things, you know, meshing what he's done really well together with the things that we've done really well. Um, but, and, and I, again, I think it's going to be a really, a really good match. Uh, and Kellen's track record speaks for itself. How, 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 how can you make Jalen better as a yeah, uh, Jalen's obviously had high high moments of success. You know, last year in 2022, a runner up for, you know, you know, obviously up there for the MVP award, and and through the first 11 games, the same thing here. And then we had a and then we had a fall off as a team. And it was it's not a Jalen, it's not just me, it's our team that we had a fall off as a team those last you know last six weeks, and we that we all need to get better from. Um, but Jalen's played some really outstanding football. Here's what I know about Jalen. If like, whatever he needs, whatever he deems, we see that he needs to work on, or he needs, uh, he sees that he needs to work on. He's gonna get better at that uh, because he puts everything he has into it, and that's, and that's a form of leadership too. Like Jalen sees something that he feels is a weakness of his, or we feel like is a weakness of his. He's gonna dive everything that he has and pour everything that he has into it to get better from that. Like that's leadership. Like that's a form of that's a form of leadership. And so I'm again, I know that, you know, obviously I'll keep some of the things that we've that we've all talked about, you know, what I need to get better at, what he needs to get better at, you know, to ourselves. But I know this that he'll put everything that he has into getting better as a football player, be, being better as as a quarterback, so we can win more games as a team. What's from, from Atlanta, what's the core DNA of your Bulldog players? And what does Kirby do so well to get his guys ready? Um, toughness, right? Toughness. Obviously, the guys that we've we've drafted and and have on our team from from Georgia are. Um, highly talented, right? We have two first-round guys in, uh, in Jordan and then uh, Jalen, another first-round guy in Nolan. We got a, a you know, third-round guy in Kobe, a fourth-round guy in Keeley. So they, they're, they're tough, they're physical, they, um, they know how to win, um, and on top of that, they're really good football players. And so we look forward to continuing to develop those guys. And so, yeah, you know, I you look at it from afar and say, hey, these guys know how to work. These guys know how to practice. I think that's a, and these guys, these guys are tough. I think that's any, anytime you can say that about another coach, like that's, my, I hopefully understand that's a high praise that I have for, for Coach Smart and, and what he's done at that program. And, and obviously grateful for that because we have some of those really good players on our team. Nick, AJ, 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 talk about, you know, not being afraid to play young players. Um, what's been your philosophy on that in the first three years in the league, and how do you see that evolving? In the next year? My philosophy has always been play the guy, play the best, the guys that are going to help you win the game every every week, regardless of whether you talk about scheme, whether you talk about players. You're trying to do whatever you can do to win the game because that's the bottom line um, is to win football games. And so whoever gives us that best chance to win a football game, that's what we'll do. Young, old. Uh, middle, it doesn't matter. We're going to do what we need to do. To, I owe that to our team, our our, our play, we and our coaches and our players and our our fans to play the best player. That that's that's going to help us win that week. And so we don't we don't care who that is. Well, what's what's you're you're probably frustrated with some of the outside noise. noise. I guess what's been your reaction to it? Do you talk to him about you know handling that type of stuff? Um, AJ, like I've been telling you guys for a long time, not only is he, you know. One of the best players I've ever been around. Um, he's also one of the best leaders, and what you know, and he's going to do anything he can do to stick up for for his for his teammates. Um, that's why I admire, that's why he wears a a C on his chest. Um, and I think that you know, if you're speculating, well, hey, what what does it mean if he's yelling over here? Like everybody doesn't. There's some people that when you're when you're leading them, you yell at them, and there's some people when you're leading them, you put your arm around them, and there's some people there's somewhere in the middle, and like that's leadership also is just figuring out what buttons to press with different guys. Not every person is true. You don't treat everybody the exact same, right? The standard is what it is, and you hold everybody to that standard. But 
you don't treat everybody exactly the same of how you get to that standard, how you correct that standard, or how you praise that standard. Everybody's a little bit different. I think, you know, uh, AJ understands that. Um, you know, like I said, just a great teammate, a great person. Um, in my opinion, best receiver that's been in Philadelphia, and I grew up a Terrell Owens fan, and I grew up a, uh, Howie says I'm too young to, to uh, like Mike Quick, but I was a huge Mike Quick fan. Um, and it's pretty cool that I get to uh, do some interviews with him every once in a while. And but you look at the stats and you look at what AJ's done in a two-year span. He's he's had the two most productive years ever as a as an Eagle wide receiver. And so, man, like when you have one of your best players being also one of your best leaders, that's that's special. Where do you, where do you land on Hassan Reddick's future with the Eagles, knowing that there's going to be a business decision that has to be made this all season? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, um, we'll see how that, that plays out. I don't know how, how that will play out. Obviously, uh, Hassan's been awesome for us these, these last two years. Uh, big, big reason why we've been to the playoffs the last, uh, two, you know, last two years, um, is the contributions of Hassan. Um, he's, he's played really, really outstanding football. So, you know, um, We'll see how that plays out, and uh, you know, hopefully, he's an eagle. Coach, more experienced staff this year than, than last year. A, was that intentional? And B, why did you turn over the defensive staff and not the offensive staff? Um, so you know, it again, it was about getting the right guys for the job. Um, you know, and and I'm excited to you know have the experience of Vic uh, here. Um, he's obviously been an outstanding coordinator for for a long time, uh, a very long time in this league. Shoot, he was telling me the other day uh, when we were driving up here that, uh, you know, the combine when he first started was in New Orleans. I, I can't even fathom how – so he's been in this league for so long, been successful for so long, and, and I'm really looking forward to that, you know, because, you know, as, as, as well as, we, as we've done on defense in the past, you know, you know and w dating back to, to Jonathan – you know, Jonathan was a first-year coordinator, as I was a first-year head coach, and uh, you know, Sean was early on in his his. I think it was his second year as a coordinator, and so I'm really looking forward to that experience that that Vic will provide. Um, Vic's a great play caller. Um, you know, he's he's done it again. Like I said, he's done it for a very very long time. Very you know, at a high level, and uh, you know, I'm really excited for that experience we have. Um, and you know, as as I think it's important. Um, that Vic had, you know, some of his guys that he's worked with before and that know his system and know the things that he requires. Um, and so there's a reason, you know, why there's, there's some change there on the defensive side because he needed some guys that were familiar uh, with that, um, you know, which, which Sean didn't have last year, you know. And, and, and so I thought that was important. Uh, as far as, you know, us kind of creating the off our Philadelphia Eagles offense going into 2024, Right, that will be you know thoughts that we've done in the past really well. That'll be thoughts that Kellen's done in the past really well, and and so um, you know we look forward to building that to, together. And so you know Kellen has a you know we we brought in uh, Doug to be the uh, the quarterback coach, um, and then we kept you know stayed pat in a, a lot of different uh, areas as well with Kevin and with Jason with Style. Those are really obviously we know those are really good coaches. Um, you know, have a lot of faith in them, and you know it's meshing of two systems to you know to grow in both systems, so we can have the, put the best product on the field. And so, you know, that's why that's kind of stayed similar. Is is you know because we're going to be doing a lot of different you know we're going to be doing different things, but we're also going to be doing things that we've been successful at as well. And so, and obviously those guys that I just mentioned on offense have been here through the success, and look forward to growing from that. What do you think of Shane Steichen in his first year in Indianapolis, and just seeing him? Here? I guess, in that role in yeah, I wasn't. I obviously didn't get a chance to watch too many of uh, Shane's games. Obviously, we were we were busy um, doing our own thing, but always rooting for Shane. Um, you know, and I and I'm I'm happy for him that the you know it was a, a success. He had to go through some ups and downs with some some guys getting injured, and he and he continued to you know coach really good football from from afar. What's what's that? Personality wise, what sticks out about him and makes him I guess ready for that opportunity. Yeah, uh, you know, he's had a lot of good experiences. Uh, I think he's all football uh, at all times. And, you know, that's what he's interested in. I think there's not a lot of, you know, you know, I've obviously feel like I have a good friendship with Shane and, uh, you know, really value that friendship. But I can't tell you that when my wife and his wife and myself and our kids 
we all went out to dinner. There was much other conversations going on besides football. Um, and that's and that's Shane. And, and so I, I value that relationship. Um, and I'm really happy that he, you know, obviously didn't get a chance to watch a lot of his stuff. Um, but, you know, happy how they, you know, that they had a successful season. And I'm really excited for him. And I'm not surprised that they did because I know Shane's a great football coach. He's a great leader. He's a great person. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy for his success that he's having. Nick, what's the running back room shaping out now that, you know, DeAndre is headed to free agency? And I think Kenny's the only one under contract for next year. Do you feel like you need to change that room around? No, I, you know, again, I, I think last year we ended up, I, I can't. You guys would know better than me. I know we were in the top ten in rushing, and that's been kind of a staple here for the past three years. And we've done it with different pieces, and it, and you always can do it with different pieces. But you know, obviously, you get attached to the things that you know. DeAndre had a great year. Um, he did a lot of really, of uh, really great things, and uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out. There's a lot to to play out, right? There's free agency. There's there's the draft. Then there's college free agency. Then there's more guys that are still left out. I mean, so there's so many things that can play out. You're, you're trying to fill, di- just like you are in a receiver room, trying to fill different roles, right? Um, you're trying to do the same thing uh, at the running back position, trying to do the same thing at the tight end position of making sure you have the right guys to, to fill the roles that you want to do as an offense. Um, and so and maybe one guy can fill three roles and maybe one guy can fill the other two. And so you just never know how that plays out um, and what players you have in place. But we, you know, obviously value the, the uh, contributions that DeAndre made. He's a great he's a great football player. We'll see how that goes um, with with where we are. But there's so much so many things to play out. Um, but, uh, you know, I know we know what we're looking for as far as that position and the roles that we want to fill with that position. And so. And having Kenny, uh, he feel, he fills some of those roles, and we're excited to have him, and uh, look forward to see what what the future has with the other guys. Nick, what's, one, what's one thing you What's one thing you learned last year from the you know, end of the season? That you think next year can help you if you are in a similar situation, you lose a game or two. Like, what was one takeaway you helped you thought? You know, we went through early in early here in 2021. We went through a like a, a really tough stretch, right? And we doubled down on the. On the situ- uh, on the the things we knew to be true, our cu- our culture, our core values, and and I wouldn't say you know, and then we went through a tough stretch here too, and and even though we said to ourselves, hey, we're doubling down on this, it didn't. In 2021, it worked, and in 2023, it didn't work. I think it's just you know, again, being in this constant growth mindset of, you know, of of things that, you know, just always trying to get better at the at. at Every style of football that you can that you're that you're that you're trying to do, and then just I do think though with those core values, it is a you always double down on those because to me, it wasn't a core values. We didn't just make them up and say, hey, connect, compete, accountability, football IQ, and fundamentals are what's important, right? We that was years and years of coaching and playing that we thought to ourselves, and I thought to myself, these are the common denominators of good football teams. And that's not that's not changing off of a bad spurt, right? And so it is it is a true double down on those from day one. Um, you know, doubling down on the connection, doubling down on the accountability. I really look at it those two, the connect and the accountability. Even though I say connect compete, well those two C's kind of go together, so it's like they say together. But connect and accountability are the two I would say cornerstones of our of our program that we that those are those are the ones that when I really take away, hey, these are important that we play with good football IQ, that we play with good fundamentals, and that we compete our ass off. Those are important, but it all starts. Every, everything starts with the accountability and the connecting, and and so it is. It's almost a a, a double down, a triple down on those um, those core values, and I look forward to when we when the players get back to do that. And as you see, that we've we've been kind of doing it as coaches with our with our uh, cheesesteak uh, uh, tour. Nick, you talked about 